Okay. Whoa. Um, welcome to the Up Until Studio. Um, we're having a great time here. Um, welcome or welcome back. I am a clown. clown. <laughs> I was featured on a television show called RuPaul's Drag Race. My name is Don. Hi, I'm Don. So, a couple months ago, while season 16 was airing, I went through and did a little like recap, talk, vibe session about my episodes one through five. You can't see that. One through five. <laughs> runways and I just kind of talked about like my inspiration who made it whatever and so today we're going to be covering the the garments that I wore on the runway of RuPaul's Drag Race season 16 episodes 6 through 12 and I even have a special bonus of what I would have worn on episode 14 if I had not been eliminated yes yes lay party <laughs> You'll see all around me, I have various things that I've worn from the show. We're going to go in on each of them. Yeah, we're gonna have a good time. I think it's gonna be fun. Let's get into this doo-doo review, baby. This doo-doo is gonna review-voo. <laughs> yes, yes, that's crazy, I love that, yes. The very first thing that we're going to talk about is going to be my episode six runway, the very first design challenge from the season, the doll design challenge. What I'm holding right here is actually a recreation that I had made of the original outfit because I wanted to wear it for performances. Like I thought it would be cute. And I had like tights that match the silver made to go with it. But unfortunately I could not find the original which is so unfortunate. So when you look at this and you see all of the like gorgeous finished edges, like ignore that. That is not what it actually looked like in real life. Oh, and I'm wearing the skirt. I don't think I want to wear the skirt anymore. So, going into this challenge, I did not like what I had prepared for the ball episode. And so I really wanted to do something that was like, a bit grander and a bit more interesting in silhouette. Like the other one, I was just like wearing boots, which were like cute and they were like boots that I made, but I was like, no, <laughs> that's boring. Also, you need to remember, I got the critique on my like branding where I was like doing like the elf ears and the makeup and whatever. I got that critique the week before, right? And so when it came to this, I was like, okay, I need to do like glamorous dawn. And so I knew I wanted to do like a big ball gown. Like that's where like the general shape came from. And actually the doll itself ended up being like the Galactic Empress edition. But the very first idea I had was like the glamour edition. Cause they just told me to do glamour. So I was like, I'll do the glamour edition. <laughs> Which I'm glad I didn't do because the space alien lady was so much smarter, so much more fun. The main inspiration that I was feeling when I made this comes from Richard Quinn. I'll put up some pictures here. And he does this cool thing where he has just like full like leather skin and then just like a dress on top of it. And so I kind of liked that idea of there's two separate things going on, like a layering thing, right? Where the base is just like this completely like shiny, uh, chromey moment. Then on top of it, we have just like this simple purple dress. Now, one thing that is cool about this garment, okay, so. If you look on the underside of this, you see it's like this green sparkly color. This was the actual fabric. The silver part that the dress is actually made of, that is actually the lining of the green. I flipped the green over, boom, metallic silver. And I was like, oh, purple and silver, that'll be so cute. It is a little Buzz light Yuri. You win infinity and win. beyond. You win some, you lose some. And that's just what it is. And that's just Megami. What? But anyway. Fuck you. <laughs> that's, that's it for the doll challenge. <laughs> So when it comes to episode seven, all right, we had the flowers. The flower runway was made by a, a seamstress designer 
named uh, Pinwheel Pinwheel. Love, love, love. Designed by me. I'll put up the original design here. Um, the hair was made by Bad Wigs SF, a lovely, lovely diva named Dion. Yeah, so that's that's who made those. But here's the thing, okay? So for florals, flowers even, I. I didn't want to do something that was just like bright, loud, colorful flowers because that's what everyone was going to do, right? I wanted to go a different route. My dress ended up being much more blue than I intended it. I wanted it more of like a like a light like a like a light uh <coughs> I wanted it like like a like a light cyan. More than anything, I had a concept. I was like, okay, flowers. You know, when do you use flowers? Weddings, dates, um to put on your coffee table. I went with the death route, right? Because what do you put on gravestones? Flowers. I, this was this was the scene I was trying to set. Imagine that there's a gravestone on the ground and it's full, it's like just filled to the brim with like dead flowers, right? And so by dead, I did like the like navy blue kind of, cause navy blue is like a real color. It's like, it's like ghosty, ghost vibes. I wanted it to look like I was an apparition rising out of my grave, which is what all of like the red notes were, you know, because like red is like blood. And death. Ghosty blood death lady. Oh, 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 just a spooky guy. <laughs> just a spooky guy walking through the spooky woods. <laughs> spooky flower woods. <laughs> Moving on from episode seven, okay, we're gonna get into episode eight, which was Snatch Game. <gasps> the runway. Flowers. Dancing Queen. The <laughs> The runway for this episode was Dancing Queen. Oh, oh. So here we have my little dancing outfit, okay? Here's the top. Here's the bottom. What I wanted to do with this look was not have to dance, okay? Because I don't know if you can tell, but that's not really my forte. Um, you know what, actually, hold on. Let me give myself a little more credit. Like, am I a dancer? Yes! I kind of ate that. Like, I don't know. Like, I think that my, like, improv dancing, like, in a lip sync, like, could use some work. But actually, I think I'm much better now. That filmed over a year ago. Okay. Mm. Like, if you watch the girl group episode, or even Power, like, I kind of tore. Or the fucking Rusical. The songs are so good. My polka outfit is designed by me, made by someone named Griffin in New York. Griff makes clothes. And then the wig is by Wig Chapel. I did the headpiece and I added all the tassels to everything and I rhinestoned it. <laughs> the original inspiration was Zelda and Dior wedding. And I think that I think it came together nicely. Like to me, the runway challenge is always like a suggestion. Take that and interpret it how you will through your lens, right? So that's why I didn't want to just do dancing costume. It's just a fucking dancing costume. It's also why I didn't want to do share as just share, but watch the other video if you want to know more about that and the alien share of it all. When it came to Dancing Queen, I chose polka because I didn't grow up doing any specific dance of any kind. And, s and <laughs> Amanda said that if she had done the dancing challenge, she would have done the sprinkler, which I think is so funny. But I guess I took it too seriously. And so I was like, I need to find like an actual dance to do on this stage, which I didn't really do. I just went like, <laughs> my grandparents on my dad's side are Czech and Polish, which is like polka central. And my grandfather had passed like two months before I got the call for Drag Race. So I was like, that'll be like a nice little homage to him. However, I didn't just want to wear a fucking polka costume. Um. <laughs> but this is arguably my favorite. I just think that this turned out really cute. I think it has like really nice movement. It's really so, so chic, so cute, so lovely. Now, let's move on to this, in case you don't know, is my garment that I made for the episode oh. nine. Episode nine. <laughs> that I made for the episode nine goth challenge. I just I love her. Kind of like um, good. made by I, me. The way that I draped it on this mannequin actually right now, I, I like wish that I had done it on the day. Like this looks so cute right there. Right, like that. The does the uh uh uh, uh the the the, the, uh, <laughs> the doll challenge. I had sewn a lot. And so for this one, I wanted to go the more sculptural route because this is the m one that's like most in line with like the history of my drag. Like I'll put in some pictures and there's even a digital drag of it that I don't want to put back on YouTube. It is currently unlisted on my channel.
where I was wearing chandelier pants, which was one of the first things I ever did in drag. It was one of like the, the first ideas that I had for a drag outfit. And I fucking love it. And so that's where I mainly drew inspiration from. Oh, I hope I have the original design somewhere. I'm sure I do. Basically, I spent the entire first day just like making this cage, which was such a pain in the ass because in order to get it to drape all like in the same like height and like not look super fucky, you kind of have to like really pay attention to like the physics of it. What happened was <laughs> everything along this looked horrible, like awful. So the next morning I came in and I found this like glitter trim and I just hot glued it all the way around just to like kind of cover up all of the mistakes. Pro drag tip, never fix anything. Just cover it up with something shiny. I think that I could have won this design challenge if I had been able to realize the full, full vision, which included a big cape that like dragged behind me made out of the same fabric, like this really, really like delicate uh, mesh fabric that the dress is made out of. Just this is what I was able to do in the time allotted and I'm so, so happy with it. I love it so, so much. If there was a challenge that I wish I'd won on the show, it is this one. Let's talk about her now. As you can see, these are my faves because they're the ones that are like lined the fuck up right here. So let's talk about her. This headpiece is inspired by the Smoogler headpiece that like everyone's been recreating. It ended up just kind of looking like broomsticks all over my head, which like is fine. Like I'm not mad about that. So this headpiece is kind of just this elaborate system of elastic. It's this elaborate system of elastic. And basically what I did was I created, you can see it in the episode, I created this kind of like headband with these big sticks on it. And then what I ended up doing was I cut holes in the lace of the wig and then stuck the little like broomsticks through it and then embellished it. It's like elaborate little like engineered thing. Um, and it was actually very hard to create, but I really loved how, um, how it turned out. Um, the goth design challenge was so, so, so much fun. I love, love, love what I created. It's very, very Beauty and the Beast takes place in a gothic castle with a cool chandelier. And I love that for me. Well, yes. Moving on. Let's now talk about episode 10. Oh my God, wait. Let's talk about episode 10, okay? So episode 10 was the true color runway, which is when I wore this. This outfit that I'm wearing right now, right now, yes. Uh, uh, uh. So the prompt for the runway was like, wear your favorite color and make an outfit that shows why it's your favorite color, right? And so I was like, okay, let's like look deep in the emotion of that. My favorite color since like fifth grade has been navy blue. And I like navy blue because it makes me feel like cool and safe and warm. I talked about this on the show. And so I wanted to create something that embodied that kind of like feeling that it gives me. Sorry, baby. So what I love about this outfit is that it was a turning point for me in my drag race package curation experience. I was doing a lot of what I consider pandering, I suppose, where I was trying to wear what I thought I was supposed to wear. You know, like for like the Audrey Hepburn runway, like that's not really something I would normally wear. Same with the share. This was a moment where I was trying to figure it out and I was just gonna like make a, like a big orange coat with like fluffy stuff, whatever. And I was like, no, there's not enough like clownery going on in this runway package. Cause at the core of it is that like, I am a clown. Like, I am. Like, and this is, like, this, what I'm wearing right now is the type of drag that I, like, prefer doing. Like, it's the type of drag that I like to do. And so, for me, it really felt like this was my return to form. This was me celebrating Dawn for everything that she's done over the past, like, three, four, five years. Designing this was a big breakthrough for me. It was all my friends' favorite thing that I created for the show. And so, like, when they told us that this was the runway for this week, I was just so happy that I got to wear it on the show. I was so excited. Anyway, yeah, I absolutely love this outfit. Love, 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 live, laugh, love this outfit. It means a lot to me. It's very special to me, very sentimental to me. Moving on to episode 11. 11 legendary. This outfit, I'm not picking that up. I don't want to. So this outfit is similar to this one that I'm wearing right now in the sense that in the designing process, I struggled so much with the 80s runway. I struggled with it to no end because like I'm not like a big like reference girl. Like I'm not very smart. I don't know a lot of things. And so for the 80s runway, I was like, what the fuck do I do? I don't know. 
I was just like looking up like subgenres, subcultures of the 80s and found that uh, glam rock was a thing. What the, the craziest thing is that there's that band that RuPaul mentioned on the runway. I'll put pictures of them up here. I, they look exactly like what I was wearing, but my design like came fully from my brain. Like I did not see any pictures of them. Like, like we both thought of that. Like that's so cool. I don't know. I just think it's really neat. So I'll put another picture of something that I made in probably 2020, which has this kind of like coat, like suspended from the coat. Like I like playing with gravity like that, like, like similar to this lady right here. But I like playing with gravity like that, right? Where I think it's like fun. You know, it's like, why, why are the chaps like hanging from the coat? I don't know, but like, it looks cool. Like, why not? I don't, I don't see you trying new shit. So shut up. <laughs> I sometimes just like to fuck around and find out. Whatever. This black shirt, this is Sasha Velour's t-shirt that she wore, I believe, on Whatcha Packin' after season nine. And when I was getting ready for the show, I actually went over my package with Sasha and she just kind of like gave me notes and it was helpful and nice and whatever. She was so sweet. She had given my friend AJ this shirt years ago and then AJ offered to give it to me to wear with this outfit because I needed like a cool kind of shirt to wear underneath it. And so I ripped her up and safety pinned it and ended up with this. Let's talk about this next one. Ow, my course is stabbing me. So here we have the body dress. <laughs> I wish that I could say that I loved this dress so much and that I love getting eliminated in her. But the, the truth is that I hate her. In the footage from the television show where I am walking the runway in this, I look fucking sexy. People were clocking me for this little hip cutout. I did it on like three outfits. Leave me alone. Here's here's what happened, okay? Let me go get the original outfit. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Here we have the lost abandoned original chains look. The main the main piece here are these pants. These are what I believe are called trick pants. Something in like the the like goth community. You may notice one side has like way more chains than the other. There were chains all the way down the side here. And then I stole a bunch of them to put on the chains outfit that I made. And then here's the top, right? So like, that's like cute, you know? I have no particular issue with that outfit, but I think that what was happening was that we were reaching a point in the season where everyone's runways were always so fucking good. And I was starting to get in my head about it. It's not that it's a bad runway, it's just that it was a bit pedestrian, I guess. Like, it was just, like, pants and a top. And so I wanted to make something that was more, like, dungeness, dawn, sexy, dark, whatever, because I thought that that's, like, would get me further. The chain dress is what it was, which ended up also being kind of pedestrian because it was just, like, a dress with chains on it. Those are all of the outfits that I actually wore on the show. But we're going to talk about one more... So, last but certainly not least, this is my fans runway, which was featured on episode 14. This look is actually, fun fact, my most liked photo on Instagram ever. Like even more than like my announcement post from getting on the show, which is kind of crazy because me and Steven just like ran out one day and just like did that photo shoot and it ended up being so fucking sickening. Um, I think that this might have been the first thing that I designed for Drag Race after I got like the list of runways and I didn't want to just like put a bunch of like clack fans all over my body and call it a dress. Um, <laughs> and so I went kind of like the pleated route. This headpiece was something that I had been wearing like a similar version for weeks in Brooklyn like right before I got the call for Drag Race. And so then when I got on the show I was like oh well what if I did that but like bigger and like with feathers. For this one I also wanted to play with silhouette a bit and I think it would have looked really good on the runway because it's backlit. The runway's backlit like that and when I walked out I feel like it would have had like really nice like shadow on like the hips and stuff. As, as we're reaching the end of this I wanted to like give a final note. <laughs> To me, it's like all of this drag was made 
over a year ago, like a year and a half ago, but it's kind of follows me as like my stamp on my showing on the show, right? And I think it's really interesting. While the season of Drag Race is airing, it's like you're living in the past quite literally. You're watching days of your life play out over like a three month period from a year ago. And like, it's so interesting to me to see like what kind of drag artist I was at the time of all this getting made as opposed to now and like the different scale and the different concept. And like, I just feel like going on drag, like doing drag here in Brooklyn, I feel like I had a narrow mind of what drag was supposed to be. And I think part of that is because in Brooklyn, things are a little bit smaller a lot of the time just because like there's no space, you know? Like, whereas like if you go to Kansas City and see someone like Q or Philadelphia and see someone like Safira, they're wearing these huge opulent things all the time. And that was just like a type of drag that I had not been exposed to at the time of getting in the call. And so this all that I've worn on the show was like my biggest possible idea of what my drag could be and it's really cool a year and a half later now to know that whatever I think my drag is right now and what it can be it's not even close to the truth you know it's just like the opportunity seems really exciting and I'm very excited about it um sorry not to get sentimental to the club ew boo boo <laughs> thank you for coming along listening to me yap about all my little outfits all my little runways that i wore on this silly little show like subscribe comment give me some engagement you know do whatever you want um i'd love to have you back all right bye <laughs>